The death of Nova Scotia's Loretta Saunders inspired a rally on Parliament Hill last week in honour of missing and murdered Indigenous women. The cause was close to Saunders' heart. She was not only Aboriginal, she was writing her university thesis on the topic. To date, there have been more than 800 cases of missing and murdered Aboriginal women across the country. On Friday, a special parliamentary committee tabled its report on violence against Indigenous women. For reaction to the report and the very serious issue, joining me now from the Conservatives, Stella Amber, Ambler, from the NDP, Jean Crowder, and from the Liberals, Carolyn Bennett. I have to ask you, uh, Ms. Ambler, uh, the last study was done in 2007, 582 women were missing at that time, it's now 800, perhaps a lot more than that. Um, we're still seeing murdered and missing Aboriginal women, and what they keep asking for is a public inquiry, and the government is saying no. Uh, we heard from the families uh, in the committee. Uh, first of all, let me say uh, what an honor it was to be uh, elected as chair of this all-parliamentary committee. I'm very, very proud of the work that the committee has done. Um, and uh, I guess what I'm most proud of is the fact that we, we listened. We listened to over 60 witnesses. We listened to the families of the uh, victims of violence uh, of the women. And uh, they, they told us, they told us that they wanted to see justice and they told us they wanted action. And so that's what the recommendations reflect. Did they listen, Ms. Crowder? Well, I've had somebody say to me, I know you can hear me, but are you listening? And I would say that no. Uh, the report recommendations, the majority conservative report recommendations do not reflect what we heard. Uh, th there was an overwhelming sentiment that we need to have a national inquiry, that we need to have a national action plan. Status quo was not acceptable. And what the recommendations put forward by the Conservatives reflect status quo. That's why uh, we tabled a dissenting report. We think that in order to demonstrate that you're listening, you actually have to do pre take preventative action. You have to act on what the family said. Uh, and uh, d that report doesn't do it. And, and Ms. Bennett, you've been advocating for years that there has to be a public inquiry. Why? It's really important in these complex issues that you actually know what are the root causes, what are the issues around policing, what's the issues around investigation, um, the supports for families, but, but without actually understanding what's going on, you can't prevent it. You can't stop the epidemic. And that's what we're hearing. It, that a national action plan we absolutely need. But it's not it's gotta be based in the evidence of, of what people know, um, we don't know in terms of what's actually causing it and, and how you can actually compel witnesses like like during Picton where those RCMP women who felt that there and there was enough evidence to identify a serial killer and weren't listened to that those are the kinds of witnesses that you can only get in a national public inquiry and um, and that's why we feel so badly that that the the majority report doesn't reflect what we heard from the national chief from the native women's association from the victims ombudsman for the government all asking for a public inquiry is this, is this an issue of money is this what you why you don't want to have a public inquiry uh, it, uh, no, I think it's an issue of action. I think it's an issue of whether we, what do we want? Another report, which is uh, another report, or do we want uh, to, to actually continue to take action and, and take further action, which is what the recommendations well, what do? What do you mean by the, action? You... Well, I mean, uh, the recommendations are clear. Uh, public awareness, uh, more on v domestic violence, substance abuse, criminal justice. This is what the families wanted. This is what they told us they wanted. Um, and, and, you know, uh, in terms of um, listening, we absolutely listened. Here's, here's what one of our witnesses said. Um, uh, I'm tired of reports. I'm sorry, said Bernadette Smith from Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's report after report that sits on a shelf somewhere. I want tangible action. That's, it's, all, it's in the title. Well, we want what, what about a call that? to action. Well, they don't want another report. What is a, what is a national well, inquiry? A big, gigantic report. So part of the feeling behind a national inquiry, and it doesn't prevent concrete steps being taken place simultaneously in terms of prevention, but a national inquiry gets at the roots, the systemic causes. We, we continue to see women go missing daily. And uh, what families, many families, uh, not unanimous, but many families are saying that they want to have this opportunity to tell their stories, they want an opportunity for closure, they want an opportunity for justice, they want an opportunity for concrete recommendations. And I think you have to respect families' request when they're asking for an inquiry.
And it has to be an inquiry that is shaped by the families themselves. Uh, we saw in the Picton inquiry, for example, that many families walked away from that because they felt excluded from the process. Well, Miss Bennett, I, I, I think it's, it's true. If, if, in, if they were white women or, uh, who were being killed at this level or, or went missing and, and the, they had asked for a public inquiry, there'd be a public inquiry like that. Yes, and if, you know, if we look at even last year when we called this, that if the murder clearance rate for Canada is 84%, and if the victim's an Indigenous woman, it drops to 50%, we, you know, we, we on any other issue, would want to know why there's, there's that gap. What's the difference? How come if a white person's missing, there's people searching the hills and valleys uh, when an Indigenous woman is missing, people say it's inevitable. Uh, but, do, but, do, but doesn't she, uh, Ms. Ambler, have a point, though, that if the government is taking action in terms of law and order and public awareness, are they doing that? Are you, do you think they're doing that? No, I think what's so upsetting in the report now, and, and even in Minister McKay's answers this week, everything is about after the fact. The families want this prevented. Uh, the DNA data bank will give them some completion on, on you know, whether that was their relative or not that's been found. Um, but we want that prevented. Let me give you an example of prevention and uh, an a uh, uh, measure that we've taken in the area of prevention and that's uh, Bill S2, matrimonial property rights for oh. women on reserve. I'd like to know why the, uh, why the NDP and the Liberals did not vote for something uh, that gives women on reserve the right to own property. When they don't own property and when they get kicked out of their own homes, they're vulnerable. They're, this is, this is vulnerable. one of, this no is shelters. No one of the root causes. Shelters. shelters is one of the recommendations. For, You're right. One reserves and so, have shelters. And so, it, well, isn't it better for women to uh, be able to own their own property? Most what Canadians do don't even know Stella. that women, Stella? I didn't interrupt either of you. I, well, <laughs> most well, women yeah. in Canada don't understand that up until last year, that women on reserve, Aboriginal women could not own, did not have the right that the rest of us, Canadian women, have, have had for decades, and that's to own their own property. That's a concrete preventative measure that, that we took and that, and that, you know, they didn't, yeah. they voted well, against. It, it shows a general lack of understanding. Ms. No. Ambler talked about owning no, property. People on, on reserves, by and large, don't own property. There's a matrimonial home the, that's no. often owned by the band. And it was when owned this, by the man, Gene. Uh, no. When this, this legislation was brought forward, what they didn't do is put other resources in to ensure that there was adequate housing on reserve. Like so they emergency let, protection orders, which well, you also emergency voted protection against. Orders, emergency protection orders, clearly the witnesses that talked about the fact. That doesn't help a woman who's what being abused? What was about you could shoot? Shoot at it. You could shoot at the, that's how much protection it is for women. There's no, no police, there's no there, shelters. I can't shelters. believe you're justifying They're voting still against Well, I can't I believe you're trying to justify it. that you're taking act, real think. action for women and real girls action. by talking about matrimonial real property when you know that's simply a red herring. You know that's a piece of the puzzle. It we, is we not heard a piece that. of the puzzle. You want to you well, take meaningful action, listen to the families. Yeah. We did listen to the uh -huh. families. We all did. We all did. You can't just say that but we were all in the same room and you you two listened, but we didn't. That's well, what we can say is, is that I, our, I, our recommendations reflect what, what we heard the family saying. Well, we haven't reached consensus today, perhaps another day. Thanks very much for joining me.